All right, let's get into the Word of God today. We're in John chapter 11. If you open your Bibles to John chapter 11, we're going to start in verse 3 and uh, read to verse 6. Good to be with you today, by the way. The Bible says, Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. You may want to highlight that. That the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Check this out. This is a... This is a, a kind of a curveball. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Uh, you know, we're dropping into this story uh, without uh, the context. And so just a reminder, you know, Jesus had uh, many disciples, but some were really close to him. You know, one family in particular was close. It was Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And, uh, and like the, the scripture says here, uh, the Lord loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and Lazarus was young. Apparently, he had become sick, and so the sisters sent for Christ to come so that he would heal their brother. And, uh, you know, Jesus, at this point, Jesus has done so many different miracles, and they've seen him heal so many people, and, and uh, really not turning anybody away for a healing. And so, you know, it was appropriate for them to think, look, all we have to do is call on him and he will come and he'll rescue us. A couple things I want to point out today for us just to consider. Number one is this, Jesus really loved people. You see that throughout the gospel according to John that in these verses the Bible says that um, he loved Mary, Mary, he loved Martha, he loved Lazarus. John calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. At the end of the gospel account he says, um, of Jesus, that he loved his disciples and he loved them to the end. And so, you know, what was remarkable, I think, from John's perspective was that Jesus really loved people. And it's just a good reminder for us. Real easy to get caught up in causes and uh, so many things that might distract us from what really matters. And so you think this morning, well, what does really matter? What really matters is loving God and loving other people. In addition to that, I think it's interesting here that while Jesus loved them, uh, he did not come immediately to rescue Lazarus from the sickness. In fact, it's kind of counterintuitive, right? I mean, there's this great expression of love that uh, John says Jesus had for this family. And yet verse 6 says that instead of coming down right away and taking the sickness away, he stayed for two more days, he waited because there was something greater that God was doing. You know, sometimes love waits. Sometimes love waits. I know that's hard. I know when we are in need of the rescue, um, when we are in need of the deliverance, when we're in need of the healing, we want that healing to come immediately. And you know how it works as a human. When it doesn't come immediately, sometimes we question whether God really loves us. And you know, we do know that God has a perfect plan for our lives. We do know that all things work together for good for those who love him and are the called according to his purpose. And therefore, we do know that God's timing is perfect in all things. Little did this family know that there was an amazing miracle, far greater than just the miracle of a, the healing of a sickness, Far greater than that miracle, there was a great miracle that Jesus had in store for this family so that the glory of God might be revealed. The glory of God connected to the holiness of God. The holiness of God refers to the infinite perfections of God, his infinite value, his infinite worth. The glory of God is the manifestation of that holiness. So what I'm saying to you today is when he works the miracle, uh, when he performs his will in your life, it brings glory to him. It expresses who he is. And I'm just, I just want to encourage you today that that is worth waiting for. I don't know what you've been waiting for. I don't know what you've been pleading with God to do. I don't know what miracle you're hoping that he executes in your life. I don't know how long that process has been of really seeking his face and asking for it to come. I can tell you this, though that he will be faithful and his timing is always perfect. And, you know, oftentimes the longer you wait, the more glory 
he reveals. So trust him today. Take that thing that's in your life that's been hard to trust him with, place it back into his hands, and know that your heavenly Father loves you and that he's working his will out in your life. God, thank you so much for your word and the encouragement and the reminder that that love waits. Sometimes, God, the rescue doesn't come when we want it, but we do know, Father, that ultimately it will come because you're always faithful. Strengthen your children today in Jesus' name. Amen.